So as you all know, President Donald Trump is currently on a two-week trip in Asia, and when he arrived in Seoul, he didn't necessarily receive the warmest welcome, and he was actually met with more than 100 protesters who were outraged at the fact that he endangered their lives by ratcheting up tensions with North Korea and constantly provoking Kim Jong-un. Now, as you can see from the photos here, these protesters, obviously, they don't want war with North Korea, nor do they want to be put in danger because the U.S. president, who they have no control over, who they didn't elect, doesn't know how to keep his mouth shut and won't stop saber-rattling against an unhinged maniac. But thankfully, it does seem as though Donald Trump may be listening to someone, perhaps them, because in his meeting with South Korea's president, Moon Jae-in, his rhetoric was noticeably less bombastic, surprisingly. So according to the New York Times, they report that President Trump, whose long-distance threats and insults towards North Korea have stoked fears of a nuclear confrontation, brought a message of reassurance to South Korea on Tuesday, moving to bolster an anxious ally as he came within 35 miles of one of the world's most dangerous borders. Gone were the threats to rain fire and fury on North Korea and the derisive references to its leader, Kim Jong-un, as Little Rocket Man, as Mr. Trump said he saw progress in diplomatic efforts to counter the threat from the North, adding ultimately it will all work out. After a day of private meetings and public bonding with President Moon Jae-in of South Korea, who was elected promising a shift towards dialogue with the North, Mr. Trump, who as recently as last month tweeted that direct talks were a waste of time, said on Tuesday that it would be in the North's interest to come to the table and to make a deal. And instead of threatening muscular preemptive action against the North, Mr. Trump said he prayed that using military force would not be necessary. I think we're making a lot of progress. I think we're showing great strength. I think they understand we have unparalleled strength, Mr. Trump said of the North during a news conference with Mr. Moon. Now, this comes just weeks after Donald Trump's administration signaled that war with North Korea was in fact imminent because the White House told its allies to remove all of its assets from South Korea, which they usually don't do unless there's going to be war. So this this is good. This development is absolutely good. I'm not going to give Donald Trump credit for this because, you know, you don't get credit for putting out a fire that you started. But at the same time, I'm certainly excited to hear that he's toned down on his bombastic rhetoric. Now, here's what I'm also hoping, that Kim Jong-un, like the idiot that he is, doesn't do more to stoke the flames. Because, look, when you have two man-babies who are in charge of countries with nuclear weapons, who are having a pissing contest, you know, this isn't about them. This is about the innocent bystanders who have no control over either one of these people. I mean, South Koreans, people in Seoul, they are vulnerable when these two idiots go back and forth. So to hear that Donald Trump is toning down on his bombastic rhetoric and he's saying everything's going to work out, this is good. But again, Donald Trump is a very unpredictable president. And <laughs> I don't trust that this tone will last. But I am crossing my fingers like never before that... He continues with this approach, and Kim Jong-un has got to stop provoking Trump. But, I mean, the the opposite is also true. These two idiots are so, they're so obnoxious because they don't realize that they are endangering millions of lives, potentially, with their saber-rattling back and forth. But Kim Jong-un has done this, you know, throughout administrations. He, he flexes and threatens the United States as a means of cultivating legitimacy among his people, and Donald Trump, just he doesn't have the, the political astuteness to recognize that that's what he's doing. These threats are not serious from Kim Jong-un. He would probably never fire on Seoul or Guam or Japan unless he actually thought the United States was going to preemptively invade them or bomb them. So as long as Donald Trump tones down the rhetoric, hopefully everything will be okay. So if people have to stroke Donald Trump's ego and tell him that this is presidential, then go for it. Anything to prevent war, because this shit terrifies me to no end. You know, when, when I learned about the story that the White House had signaled to allies in South Korea to withdraw assets, that kept me up at night, literally, because war is serious business. I mean, a war with North Korea, the amount of destruction and chaos that that would cause, the extent to which that would destabilize the world is it's unthinkable. I can't even imagine 
that level of devastation in my head, and I don't want to. So this is certainly a change for the better. Let's hope that Donald Trump keeps this up because, you know, this, <laughs> this helps us all sleep at least a little bit easier at night. Support this podcast by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash humanist report.